Hey everyone, my name is Cameron with Motion Science, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I took this render that one of my students created, and how I put my spin on it, and kind of revised it, and made it into a little bit more cinematic galaxy universe render. So without any further ado, let's dive in, and let's get started. All right, so as I said, initially, this was the render that my student Milan created, and it's really cool, right? Initially, he had a Doctor Who telephone booth spinning inside of this render here, and it looked really cool. But I saw a few things in here that I really wanted to change up. Now, I do like the color palette of what Milan created here, but I also did want to kind of go back to the original image, which is what we have here. I really liked the colors here. What I started with was just the image, right? And it's 3D. And you'll notice like in the render that Milan did, there's an ease of the camera. So the camera starts at zero and kind of moves into speed and then kind of comes to a stop here. And that's cool, but I wanted first and foremost for that camera to be continually moving the whole time. So I deleted those ease keyframes here on the timeline and I made it so that the movement is continually moving, right? So we've got a 3D image here. This image, the 3D layer, you can see right here, it's 3D. And we've got a camera that's moving also. So we're just kind of moving across it. And the layer is pushed way back in Z space. We look at the position, it's 5,048 pixels back in Z space. Now you're gonna see there's an effect here for a displacement map. And that's because what it's doing is it's referencing this solid layer here. So if I turn this solid layer on, you're gonna see this is a fractal map that Milan had created that had movement in it. And what I did is I removed the keyframes, the movement. I just made it a black and white image with fractal noise. And I also applied a Gaussian blur to this. So this is what the map looks like without the Gaussian blur. And then I just blurred a lot of it just to make the edges a little more smooth and less refined. So if I turn that off, I turn the displacement map on. What it's doing is it's referencing the fractal layer above it and it's looking at the effects as well. So it's looking at that there's a fractal noise effect on this layer. There's also a, a blur. And then I set some very simple keyframes. So I started with a value of a 40 on the horizontal displacement and I went to, I believe, a negative value of 40. So positive 40 to negative 40, which we can see right here. And then we've got a max vertical displacement of 10, which this could probably even be set to zero. So when we turn that displacement map on, we can see now it looks like there's depth here, right? And this is something Milan had set up initially, but again, I went in kind of revised and changed it. Now, the only thing that looks kind of funky to me right now is when we get to this point about right in here, this star up in here starts to really kind of warp, but we can do things to not call attention to that and I'll show you what we'll do with that here soon but you can see as we move across there's some there's some depth right just because we're using a displacement map and we're referencing fractal noise it looks like this galaxy this nebula has depth to it right there's foreground there's middle ground there's background so that's the first step now what we also have here is we have a point light and I pulled this right in from Milan's project as well and that creates some nice vignette to the edges so we're just using a point light here and it's just lighting that image and it's looking pretty solid so far also milan had used a particle system and if i go ahead and just solo that and i hit the e for effect it's just using particle world and in milan's initial animation the particle system was kind of just sitting over here on the left and the particles would disappear and i thought let's just make those particles last a little bit longer they still kind of fade out like that but it just gives it more depth because the particles are kind of stretched across the entire scene here. So if we look at all of this together, and I turn off the fractal noise because we're just referencing that layer, you can see now we've got this nebula system with depth to it from displacement mapping, but we also have these particles, these star systems that are floating in space closer and further back. So we've got this really nice sense of depth already in this scene just by using particles and an image with displacement mapping. If you're eager to create motion design that's gritty, atmospheric, and cinematic, like the example I'm showing you, I invite you to explore the Motion Science membership at www.motionscience.tv mastery. Inside this membership, you're gonna find hundreds of projects just like this one, including the project files, and they can help you elevate your motion design to develop a very striking cinematic style through our trainings, our techniques, and our supportive community. So I definitely invite you to check it out. 
Now let's go back to the training. Okay, so here we are in the next composition and you may be saying, you know, why are these rule of thirds up here? Why are these guides up here? Well, these are the rule of thirds and I teach a lot of this in my courses in training because these are super important. These are focal points for our eyes to look at. And if you lay this grid over any professional motion design piece, like a title sequence or anything, you're gonna see that the type and things like that kind of follow these guides. So what I did is I added some really simple type here and it says the universe and it's faded out at this point but i put these guides up because i wanted to place this universe type in 3d space and i positioned it forward in space about a thousand pixels it's negative thousand i'm not following these points exactly right like this point up here is a major focal point the type is sitting here even though we can't see it and it ends and again it's not you know totally off point here but it's it's centered it's close to this line of interest. And so this rule is here so that we understand it, but then once we get good at it, we can break that rule. So the type is in, it fades in with a very simple animation composer preset. And if I just solo this, you're gonna see it fades in left to right and it just says the universe. And this is a marker that animation composer adds to my timeline. And I can drag this marker around to make the transition in shorter or longer. It just kind of depends on what I want to do. If you haven't checked out animation composer, it's one of those tools for motion designers that I think is just invaluable. It just has a lot of really nice presets for type and things like that. And I absolutely love it. So it's easy to use. And I just threw it on this layer of type here and it looks, it looks really nice. So if I look at that with this, it's really nice right now there is an effect on here i've added a tent and that tent is is not black right if i set this to fit it may look like this is black but it's actually i referenced some black from in here so this isn't fully 100 black it's more of a greenish black which i'm pulling from the image right because i want this type to kind of like live in this world so that's one thing. I've also got a Gaussian blur effect applied to it. And that effect is a very small amount of 1.8 pixels. And that's just to remove some of the digitalness, the crispness that this type has, just to make it a little bit more organic. So this is already looking really nice. I really dig that. Next thing I did is I used some textures that Milan had pulled into his original project. One of those is a Texture Labs grunge layer and you can see here it is it's sitting over the top here if I just solo it by itself it's just these really simple lines here and what I did was I think um, this is how they originally came in just more solid like this the levels effect has been applied because the original image is this and the levels effect is applied to remove those gray values and just make it black and white I added some directional blur to blur it horizontally and then i also added some fast box blur just to soften it up overall and it's set to a screen mode so that it sits over the top here and it almost kind of looks like it's like it, it gives this impression that maybe there's like a optical flare that's kind of coming into the lens or maybe it's a star i don't know but it, i really liked the look of it and i went ahead and kept it in there with those small changes applied to it and then we've also got another layer here and what this is, is this is just a duplicate. So I had my original layer here and I duplicated it to the layer above. I turned off displacement mapping and I played around with glow. I decided I didn't like it. But what I did to this layer is I added a really simple rotation value to it. So you can see it rotates from a value of 20 to a value of 80 here at the end. And there's a mask on it here. So if I hit M for mask, you can see there is my mask. I'm just focusing in on the star here in the middle. And I put a high value of feathering in of 152 pixels. And if I put it over the top here, it just creates now this kind of like optical illusion that this is a maybe a very distant sun and it's just rotating. You know, it's, it's rotating faster than it probably would in reality. And there's still some weirdness here with the displacement map. You can see on the on the background image, like right here, it starts to warp and look kind of funky. I didn't notice it so much though. And once I finished this piece with all the effects over the top of it. So this is interesting because it's adding some visual interest, right? Some rotation of this kind of star back in the background. Just gives some very subtle visual interest to it. And then I also pulled in this solid here. Milan had created this and it's just like this 
bluish green solid. And if I turn it on and I hit M for mask, you can see it's just sitting over here, right? It's just a solid that's just sitting off to the side here with a mask and it's got a high feather value of a thousand pixels. So very feathered. And if I hit T for transparency, you're going to see there's an expression here of 2050, right? So what that does is it creates this flicker effect like we see here. Now, this could maybe be from like, maybe we're looking out through a spaceship or something like that. Or maybe there's a very distant sun that exploded, right? Again, there's not a lot of reason for this flickering, but it, I felt that it worked really well in the composition, just adding some visual interest over to the right side. Okay, so for the final finishing touches to this piece, what we're gonna do is we're going to add a camera lens blur. And this is just an adjustment layer with a camera lens blur applied to a value of five, very, very small amount. And it's referencing this camera lens blur layer four, which is right above it. Now, if I turn that layer on and I solo it, you can see this is just a solid layer with a mask applied again. And it's got a very high feather value of 570 pixels. So if I zoom out, that's what it looks like. So there's some black values, some gray values, and some white values. And we're telling the, the camera lens blur adjustment layer below it to reference that layer, to look at those black and white values. So if I turn this on, it just adds a little bit of depth blurring, right? So if, if you focus in like maybe here on the right side, if I turn it off, on, off, on. Again, it's very subtle, but it adds some visual interest to the piece. It's all about the subtleties. So that's what I did. And then I can go ahead and lock this layer above it that it's referencing. And the final piece here is I used a film effect from Sapphire and a warp chroma effect. And if I go ahead and delete this glow, I did play around with the glow. If I turn it on, it's gonna really crunch those values and bring us into this, this world here of greens and blues and oranges, really, really pretty stuff. And then if I turn on warp chroma, it's gonna give it just a little bit of chromatic aberration. And I'm using a preset here that that's, I think it's called subtle chromatic aberration. Uh, sometimes even the subtle can be a little bit too much. So if I play this back, we're gonna see what we ended up with. And there you have it, there is our universe title sequence. Really fun making this, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.